What's up, buckaroos? The past few days, I've been wondering why this video specifically has been blowing the fuck up. And also, I've been starting to get a bit of inspiration to get back into making Genshin videos. I have three other videos in the works, but before I get into those videos, I want to kind of sort of lay a groundwork and set expectations for how I talk about this game and for what angle I approach it from. So I absolutely adore and love y'all's input on the Unknown God video, and it popped off in a way I did not expect it, like, at all. Mostly because that video is absolute shit. Some of those comments offering questions or discussions or theories of your own are fantastic. Some of them really got me looking at my own theory or other community theories from a completely different angle. And that's fantastic and I encourage that a lot. But some of those comments were less mindful and less thoughtful and basically said, nah, it's Kiana. And left it at that. None of them were accusatory and I appreciate that. I got lucky on that front. But they still gave off a know you're wrong kind of vibe. Which yes, it's the internet and it's going to happen. And I know that. I went into making videos knowing this perfectly well. You can call me wrong all you want, but I want to present why I completely ignored bringing up Kiana in that video. For those unaware, the most popular and most sound theory as to the identity of the Unknown God is that she's a character from Miyahoya's previous game, Honkai Impact. There's this character named Kiana, or she's also named the Harsher of the Void, who's very similar in design and abilities as the Unknown God. There are also plenty of ties between the Genshin and Honkai universes, so much so that there are theories out there that the games share a universe, or even that Genshin is a simulation inside of the Honkai universe. I am not oblivious to these theories by any means. When I made those videos, I was less familiar, to be fair, but I still knew they were around. Now I am quite familiar with these, at least at the basis of the theories, and a few of the details. I understand vaguely who Kiana is and why she's important in Honkai and why people think it's viable that she exists in the Genshin universe and a few other tidbits I've been able to find from other community theories. And this feeds into my main point. I have never played Honkai. I probably never will. And that's why I am intentionally ignoring to the very obvious connection between the universe of the games. As, and excuse my pronunciation, Ia Rivalia. Eo okay. As Eo in the comments of my Unknown God video said, it's not Mihoyo's style to make knowing the previous game lore mandatory to understand the current lore. You usually need to read their manga slash spinoff to get the full picture, but only the manga and the spinoff of the game that you are playing. Eo brings up a very good point and a philosophy that I want to stick to when I'm theorizing about Genshin. Unknown God is more likely to be a Kiana equivalence unique to Teyvat. Mihoyo pre-Honkai game, GGZ, showed that there's a whole multiverse out there and the Kiana equivalents exists in almost all of them. And to further Eo's point, it's quite ridiculous for any game company to expect their players to know the lore of an entirely different game to understand the lore of another. It's probably been done before, don't get me wrong, but even in long-running series like The Elder Scrolls or Final Fantasy, if there's an underlying story in the first place across the series like in The Elder Scrolls, the understanding of it isn't crucial to understanding the story of individual games. I cannot tell you how many times I've told people that Tamriel has world building to it past what's seen in Skyrim and then be blown away by that fact. And that's exactly what Mihoyo is doing. They have created a game with a world completely separate from their other IPs, none of which you have to experience to fully understand the lore of this world. And if Mihoyo proves to be competent and sane with their storytelling, we will never need to use Honkai's dense and long-running story to understand what's going on in Genshin. Just like you don't ever need to use GGZ's story to understand what's going on in Honkai. Presumably, I've never actually played Honkai. Now, I'm not denying the existence of connections to Honkai. That's just as ridiculous as saying Skyrim doesn't have connection to other Tez games. It's categorically false, because all Tez games take place in the same world, Tamriel. As far as we understand, all MiHoYo games take place in the same multiverse, or something along those lines. Saying there are no connections to Honkai is just wrong. Just like it's unequivocally wrong to say that Skyrim isn't connected to other Tez games, it's wrong to say that Genshin isn't connected to the rest of the games MiHoYo have made. MiHoYo have put a lot of tips, easter eggs, and nods to other games to the point where it's more probable that there is in fact a MiHoYo cinematic universe instead of just being a series of easter eggs. And it seemed to be actually rather intentional. But the analogy falls apart once you take into account that we are talking about multiverses, places in space and time that are separated by more than just a mountain range, where in Skyrim you're talking about a continent where you can walk from Skyrim to Cyrodiil or Morrowind. 
And because of that fact, traveling from the world of Genshin to the world of Honkai is going to be much, much more difficult than moving from Skyrim to Cyrodiil. Because of this fact, when we see a connection between the two games, it should be quite easy to distinguish between it being a canonical connection or just a mere easter egg, but it really isn't. With how MiHoYo have gone about connecting the games, it's hard to tell, at least at the moment where 1.2 is fresh, between canon and a simple nod. From what I've seen, even people that have played Honkai don't quite understand how these connections work yet. It could be as EO said that these connections are because these are parallel universes of sorts, where there is a Kiana equivalence between the, these universes, as well as an equivalent of Wendy, May, and a whole bunch of other people from Honkai. The moneyness of this, as well as the fact that I actually haven't actually ever played Honkai, combine into the reason why I don't want to read Genshin and theorize about Genshin in the context of Honkai. This story in this game is phenomenal. The fact that it connects to Honkai is really cool and is probably a completely correct theory. But I don't want to treat it like that. I want to recognize that the story in this game is wonderful on its own. I want to talk about this game without mudding the waters by bringing in a very long and dense lore of an entirely different game series where the characters and events of said game series are in another world at least, another universe at most, and where the connections between the universes are extremely weak and obtuse unlike a series like The Elder Scrolls. And I think that reading this game from the angles I do brings a more unique take on what this game has to offer. Most everybody I have watched have taken a Honkai into account one way or another, which is perfectly fine, but having multiple angles to approaching a story is the best way for a community to treat a story, especially one that has so many open questions like Genshin. So yes, I know there are very strong connections between both of the games, and I'm willingly ignoring those connections because this game's story is perfectly fine by itself. And I want to experience this game and theorize about its stories without having to take into account another entirely different game. Although depending on how Mihoyo played her cards, this might not be possible past a point. And as a side note, yes, I'm aware of the voice lines Ayaka has about Yai Sakura. It's still in beta, so it's not final, and Ayaka isn't going to be coming out for a long ass time, so we'll just see how this turns out. So now that we have that out of the way, we can actually start talking about other bits and pieces of this game. First up, I want to talk about the Travail trailer. We're going to be breaking down that trailer like I'm breaking down poetry. So I'll see you all in the next video.